Hey, I'm back on the road. It's been a while. Driving up to Buffalo. It's about a five and a half hour trip to drive there. I'm just gonna go ahead and knock out a ton of meetings while I'm up in Buffalo. I have never driven to Buffalo, I don't believe. Driven close, I mean, past it, Toronto, Montreal. Um, so I've driven this far, it's not crazy. Um, and luckily, my, the car will stay in the lane for the most part while I'm driving on the highway. So it should be a, a fun trip. Um, this reminds me of the trip down to DC, Washington, DC, which was a pretty far trip. It wasn't as long as this, um, but this should be fun. I enjoy, it's a nice day. Hopefully the drive back will be nice as well. Um, and I've got about five and a half hours to go. So I'll keep you posted throughout the drive. Hope you enjoy it. Speak to you guys soon. Bye-bye. So guess what? I am about, I don't know, an hour and a half in. Now it's started to snow. I'll flip the camera around, take a look. Okay, I made it to downtown Buffalo. I'm about, I don't know, <clears throat> 10, less than 10 minutes away from uh, Finn's office. Um, to meet all folks, looking forward to it. And here's downtown Buffalo. Hope you enjoy the interviews. Uh, um, and looking forward to speaking to a lot of people. Let's go more into GA4. I know you mm -hmm. have, um, you know, talk a little bit about the benefits. But first, a message from our sponsor. SE Rankings is a top-rated SEO platform designed to help agencies and businesses of all sizes automate their daily tasks and make data-driven decisions. You can get your 14 free day trial at serankings.com. Check it out. Yeah, so after all those mismatching numbers, there are some positives. <laughs> I think a lot of things are gonna be a lot easier. The cross-domain tracking is a lot easier to set up. So that's something we had this whole process through Google Tag Manager to do, and now it's just a matter of inputting the domains really that you wanna cross track with. Um, the bot filtering I've seen work really well. So I've been maintaining all these segments to filter out bot traffic that I see in. Um, so you come into to GA3, but I'm not seeing that come into GA4. How, how bad is the bot situation? In, in it comes in spurts. Like there will be, I'll see a spike in one account on one day and then I'll look at other accounts we manage and I see the same thing. So- But it's a noticeable spike, so you know. Oh yeah, so then I'm digging in and then I find either a keyword I can use or a location I can, something I can filter out. Uh -huh. um, so I make segments for those. It's not so often, right? You don't really often have these these bot issues, right? I feel like it's, I I haven't like seen anything in 2022 once, yet. Maybe right. a couple times a year. Once every like Maybe six months, Maybe a couple months, times right? a year, yeah. yeah. That's what I was gonna say, okay. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Um, I talked about the debug view, I really like that. The one thing I'm really excited about is the event scope segments. So in GA3, you can use session or user-based segments. Right. And now they have event-based segments, which is kind of how I've always wanted segments to work. So if you apply a segment now to say, say contains blog, you're gonna get other pages outside of the blog because the user visited a blog page and the home page and whatever else. So it's capturing their whole session. So the event-based segment will actually drill down to a section of the site or whatever you want, but it won't bring in all that other stuff. So it's another option for a segment. I'm excited about that. Um, the attribution model option so it's in the settings you can change your attribution model and that changes it across a bunch of different reports in ga4 um i got really sick of the multi-channel attribution section of ga3 that's the only place you can change your attribution model um so that i'm excited about and then the free bigquery integration i'm hoping to do some things with that so kind of i like where they're going with it encouraging people to put data in bigquery and connect it to other data um so I would like to try that out too. So there's some exciting stuff in there. Interesting. So on, on those notes, also what I do like is the ability to customize the sidebar a little bit more than you can mm -hmm. on uh, Universal. You can't really do that much. Although you could do a lot more customizations of the reports themselves, I think, in Universal Analytics than you can in GA4 in general. Maybe I'm wrong. So there's, so GA4, yeah, you can customize kind of the default reporting and then there's that whole explore section yeah. where you can Just make all your- Drag own. and drop things Exactly, everywhere. yeah. And then you're like- I'm in there It doesn't work and too. then it gives you an error and then you have to try it again. <laughs> um, other thing is in terms of the cross domain stuff, mm -hmm. what I ran into issue, I, I, my company does a lot of software development and some of that's app development. If you have a Firebase profile for the apps that your clients create or that you create for your clients, 
by default, they already have a GA4 property. So if you create a new, like if you say, oh, clients, hey, we have to go ahead and give you a new GA profile. Here's a snippet to add to your website. If they have an app already using Firebase, Google Firebase, they already have that code base mm-hmm. and they already have that profile. So you're basically duplicating that. And then if and then the app isn't going to be tracked in the new GA4 pro, uh, profile. I don't know if you know that, but a lot of people don't know that. I ran into that like with three or four of our clients huh. where they already have GA4 profiles because they have a Firebase uh-huh. Google Play Store account. So it just automatically created that in 2020? GA4 is Firebase when it, when it first launched. Okay. That's mm-hmm. where it came from, I believe. Mm-hmm. I could 99% sure basically GA4 is Firebase. Okay. Um, so now they're adapting GA4 to be its own thing, but the profile setup, like you have to create an iOS profile, you have to create a mm-hmm. well, web streams, they call it. Yep. But you have to add a snippet of code to your app to handle that. Well, technically not. It's basically the app identifier um, is how it figures it out. And by default, when you create a Firebase account for your Google Play app, it creates that ID and it already gives you a profile. Um, so that's one thing that a lot of people, at least on my end, that I see if, you, if your clients have apps, which mm-hmm. so a lot of big clients do have apps, they probably already have that Firebase profile. So then you have to go ahead and say, all right, we need access to your Firebase app so that we could create the web property and the iOS and any other pro- cross domains that you want to add to that property. Mm-hmm. That's the only other things I wanted to add there. Anything else cool you find with GA4? Uh, I think those are my my biggest things. I I do want to kind of get into some of the predictive stuff they've been talking about. So the predictive audiences, I haven't really dabbled with that yet. So I kind of want to see how that's going to be built out more too because I know they're involving more machine learning and all that kind of stuff. So Cool. All right. So let's move into the, the second topic that you wanted to mm-hmm. discuss was around like dashboards and stuff around, you know, making platforms that talk to each other. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that topic? Yeah, so that's just been an area kind of we've been seeing a lot of interest from clients um, in kind of getting people out of such a silo in each platform and encouraging that holistic view. So kind of connecting all the ad platforms and their CRM into one dashboard tool, get everything visualized in one place, and then they can see how their ad clicks are playing out into the lead funnel and turning into customers and all that. And then it kind of brings this attribution point into it too, where you're looking at one model and seeing, I don't know, deciding, deciding which platform to attribute it to basically. Since if you go into Google ads and Microsoft ads, they're going to over report from the dashboard view where you're combining everything and choosing one attribution model. So I kind of like that. Um, And obviously it kind of helps figure out which ads are doing better and all that good stuff. So a lot of interest there lately. So what are the popular like, CRM tools that you have to integrate with there? Or um, each client's different? A lot of HubSpot. Okay. It's been a lot of HubSpot. Sometimes straight from Salesforce or sometimes the Salesforce will go into HubSpot and then we connect to HubSpot. Those are probably the two biggest ones, Marketo. Yeah. And any, I mean, you have experience with, all, with pretty much most of them. Which 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 you prefer? Out of all the out of all these CRM applications, I have the most experience with HubSpot, and I okay. do find that to be the most user friendly. So I would I would pick that one. Yeah, I was at their office, maybe like I don't know several months before COVID, interviewing one of their SEOs, Asia Frost. It's not Asia. Her spells it Asia Frost, but it's Asia Frost. And it's funny. I'm like people are walking around. I'm like looking at people as they walk around, and they're literally in their like pajamas and like sleepwear. Hmm. I'm like she's like I'm like yeah. She basically looks at me and she's like. Yeah, we come. We have a policy where you can wear whatever you want to work. People just come comfortable; they don't care. I'm like, interesting. And I wonder what that office is like now with COVID. I, I mean, you guys right. are all back here, which is shocking to me. None of my employees really? want to come. Like, I have an office, probably about this a little bit, a little bit smaller than your guys, and I have three people outside of myself and and my my co part uh, co my co um, partner. Um, that come to the office every day. Oh, wow. The rest all work from home and they're not far away. Some of them are like five minutes away. Some yeah. of them are like 20, 30 minutes. And just like last week, I'm like, any chance you guys want to come back? I have this big space here. You guys used to love mm-hmm. working here. I'm like, oh, because we do daily and daily calls on, on Google Meet and stuff and they're perfectly happy working from home. It's more flexible. Yeah. So Yeah, most most that. people love it. We're the weirdos that like coming, coming here and being around each other. Yeah, so. I guess it's the difference between having developers versus mostly marketers. I guess marketers are more social, social marketers, versus developers who just like to sit in a dark room and program all day. Yeah. But we'll have to check our work from home calendar, see which department is working from home more. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, <laughs> let me know. Cool. Um, anything else you want to discuss on that on that front? Um, I don't 
No, I don't think so. Cool. All right. So I appreciate you letting me interview you. Yeah. Thank Thanks you. for having me here in your studio. It's pretty cool. I always see it from the other side. So now I'm actually here yeah, looking at it. Yeah, the inside look. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> It's nice meeting you. Yeah, and you uh, can you tell people on the camera how they could follow you, learn more about you? Sure. So I am Data by Sarah on Twitter, and you could search my name on LinkedIn as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye.